This is the Moto G Stylus 5G disassembly. If you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. We need to use a hairdryer or a heat gun to apply heat to the back plate so we can loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Now, before you can completely lift off the back plate, there is some adhesive around the fingerprint reader over here, which you're going to have to pry off as well so you don't rip off the cable of the fingerprint reader. So you're going to press down and hold on the fingerprint reader while you're prying the back plate off. So here's a look at your plastic back plate. There are 15 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Now once the screws are removed, we can lift up and remove the top plastic cover. So taking a look at this plastic cover, we can see the camera lens cover over here. And we can see numerous antenna lines, which are these gray lines over here on this plastic piece. Taking a look at the back side, we can see the LED flash is located right over here. And here are the contacts for it. The fingerprint reader can now be disconnected. Now this graphite film can be peeled off. Now that we have access to the battery cable, we can go ahead and disconnect it. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can disconnect the rest of the cables. There are two wire cables over here in the corner, which needs to be popped off. There's a copper tape over here covering the connector for the front facing camera, which needs to be peeled off in order to disconnect the front facing camera. There's one Phillips screw located right here, which needs to be removed, which is holding on the main board. Now the main board can be removed. Taking a closer look at the motherboard, this would be your 48 megapixel main camera, your macro lens, and your depth and ultra wide lens. There is some copper tape over here covering the shield. Peeling it back doesn't really reveal anything underneath. So basically this copper tape would just transfer heat away from the shield and components underneath. Taking a look at the back side, we can see the SIM reader and memory card reader located over here, a secondary microphone located right here, the proximity sensor is located right here, and yes, this phone does come with a notification LED which is located right over here. As far as the camera connectors go, they can be disconnected by just popping them off. Moving on, we have more copper tape over here on this shield with some thermal paste over here. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see a thermal pad over here, which sits on top of the processor. In order to remove the speaker assembly down here, we need to peel off this graphite film. Now we can lift up and remove the speaker assembly. Taking a look at the plastic housing of the speaker, we can see some more antenna lines over here. There's a flex cable and two wire cables on the subboard, which need to be disconnected. Once those have been disconnected, there's one more Phillips screw over here, which needs to be removed. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. On the subboard, there's a liquid damage indicator located over here, which is this white sticker. Your charger port's located right here, and your headphone jack's located over here. On the other side, your main microphone is located over here underneath this shield. When it comes to removing the battery, there are no pull tabs provided, so you are going to need to use isopropyl alcohol to help you pry the battery off. You're going to squeeze a few drops around the sides of the battery and you need to let it sit for about a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath the battery, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at your battery. Once the battery is removed, we can see this flex cable over here, which connects the main board to the subboard. We can also now see the screen flex cable over here, which is routed to the slit or opening in the midframe. Most replacement screen assemblies will already come with this midframe pre-attached, but if you get a screen that doesn't come with the midframe and you have to replace your screen, at this point you would have to heat up the front of the phone where the screen is so you can loosen up the adhesive underneath and pry the screen off, and then you get your new screen, apply new adhesive, make sure you run your flex cable back through the slit or opening over here in the midframe, and reapply your screen. And at that point you would go ahead and reassemble the phone. The vibrator motor is located right over here on the bottom. The enclosure or housing for the stylus is located over here. And here's your stylus. And the flex cable for the power button and volume key is located right over here. 
and it is routed through the midframe over here. So if you ever had to replace that, you would have to pry the screen off to gain access to that cable. The earpiece speaker is located over here on top and is held in with some adhesive. If you have to replace that, you just have to heat it up a little bit and pry it off. And finally, there is another liquid damage indicator over here, this white sticker on the midframe by the SIM reader. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 7 out of 10. The back plate does have some strong adhesive, making it difficult to pry off. And the battery doesn't have any pull tabs to help you pry it off, so you are going to need isopropyl alcohol. But aside from that, the majority of the parts are replaceable without too much difficulty. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once all the screws are back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your back plate. Now flip over your phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you guys next time.